This started with a photo. A sleek new wind turbine, stationary, shrouded, and mounted on the rooftop of a warehouse in Norway. Nothing strange about that. But someone pointed out that it looked familiar. Too familiar. The resemblance wasn't to another modern turbine, but to a sketch, ink on parchment from the 18th century. At first it felt like a neat coincidence. Then the comparisons deepened and the story began to unravel. Was this new device really based on a long-forgotten invention? Or was it something else entirely, something misunderstood from the start? The deeper we looked, the stranger it got. Let's find out. The Rise of Rooftop Wind For decades, the race in wind energy has been about one thing. Going bigger, taller towers, longer blades, broader reach. But there's a catch to all that ambition. As turbines grow, so do their problems, logistical nightmares, transport headaches, structural risks, and skyrocketing costs. We've nearly pushed the limits of how large wind systems can reasonably get, which leaves a simple question hanging in the air. What now? The answer might not be bigger, but closer. Closer to where energy is actually used. Rooftop wind isn't new, but most attempts have either underperformed or caused more trouble than they solved. That's starting to change. Companies are finally refining the tech and the strategy. Enter the VX175. In February, Norwegian firm Ventum Dynamics launched this rooftop turbine after nearly six years of development. It's not tall, it doesn't swivel, and it doesn't look like the giant fans most people picture. Instead, it's compact, enclosed, and engineered to sit along the edge of a roof like it belongs there. This isn't just another wind turbine. It's a shift in mindset, one aimed at small-scale urban power that finally makes sense. And it's wrapped in something unusual, a shroud, the shroud and the spark. At first glance, the VX175 doesn't even look like a wind turbine. It's more like a modern art sculpture, cylindrical, smooth, and wrapped in a hollow cage that looks strangely decorative. But that outer shell, called a shroud, is the reason this machine stands out. The basic idea is deceptively simple. The shroud accelerates airflow into the rotor. Faster wind means more energy. It's like squeezing water through a nozzle to increase pressure, except with air. Ventum claims the design pulls in more wind and channels it more efficiently than open blade turbines. And because it's omnidirectional, it doesn't need to turn with the breeze. Mounted on the edge of a building, the turbine also takes advantage of something called the edge effect. When wind hits a wall, it curves upward and speeds up. The VX175 is positioned to catch that accelerated air, giving it an advantage that rooftop turbines often miss. But that shroud, it got people talking. Not because of what it does, but what it looks like. Someone recognized the shape, and then someone else. Soon, people were whispering about an old windmill sketch from the 1700s. That's when things started to get weird. Darwin's Forgotten Windmill. Before Charles Darwin rewrote biology, his grandfather Erasmus was sketching machines. A physician, poet, and part-time inventor, Erasmus Darwin spent his life dabbling in ideas that were far ahead of his time. Among them, a strange wind-powered machine drawn in the late 1700s with a structure eerily close to the VX-95. It wasn't a turbine by today's standards. It was an octagonal tower fitted with angled flaps and horizontal blades inside, a system designed to catch wind from any direction. Darwin's writings claimed it could generate more power than the vertical mills common in his day. The design even saw real-world use at a pottery factory run by his friend Josiah Wedgwood. It worked for over a decade. When modern engineers stumbled upon Darwin's windmill again, the resemblance to Ventum's turbine was uncanny. Not identical, but close enough to stir debate. Could it be that Ventum simply revived a 200-year-old idea, dressed it in a sleek shell, and called it new? That theory spread fast. Diagrams were compared. Claims were made. Even some engineers started calling the VX-175 a Darwinian turbine. It made a great story, but there was one major problem. It wasn't true. 
the real origin, Implux. Long before Ventum's turbine was born, a different engineer had a similar vision. His name was Varan Surishan. In the early 2000s, he was already developing rooftop systems that harvested wind long before urban wind power was a buzzword. After years of tinkering, he created something called the Implux Turbine. Like the VX-175, the Implux was a stationary vertical system encased in a shroud. But Surishan didn't get the idea from Darwin. In fact, he'd never even heard of Erasmus. He came up with the concept through years of first-hand engineering work dealing with rooftop airflow, ventilation, and the constant invisible river of wind that flows over buildings. The Implux wasn't just a concept either. It worked. Honda's Formula One team even tested a version, but despite its promise, the turbine never reached commercial success. Manufacturing stalled, licensing deals collapsed. Political barriers, not technical ones, kept it grounded. Meanwhile, Ventum Dynamics was quietly developing its own design. When they eventually discovered the Implux, they didn't dismiss it. They reached out. What followed was a collaboration, one that led to Ventum acquiring the patent. The truth? The VX-175 is an evolution of Implux, not Darwin's dream, Surations. When stories collide, the Darwin link wasn't made by Ventum. It came from an outsider. A viewer sent a message saying the VX-175 looked like something drawn centuries ago. That sparked a deep dive. A sketch from Erasmus Darwin surfaced. It showed a tower, flaps, and internal blades. The resemblance was uncanny. Writers, engineers, and some researchers got pulled into the idea. The story of a long-lost invention being reborn was too good to ignore. Weeks of research built a narrative. But it was based on an assumption. Because when Ventum and Surishan were asked about Darwin, they were confused. They'd never seen the drawing. The connection was just a coincidence. But coincidences, when repeated, look a lot like truth. Especially when the designs do share functional ideas, like omnidirectional airflow and enclosed rotors. It wasn't plagiarism. It wasn't a revival. It was parallel thinking. Two engineers, two centuries apart, facing the same challenge in different worlds. The case for shrouds. The Darwin link wasn't made by Ventum. It came from an outsider. A viewer sent a message saying the VX-1 Evan 5 looked like something drawn centuries ago. That sparked a deep dive. A sketch from Erasmus Darwin surfaced. It showed a tower, flaps, and internal blades. The resemblance was uncanny. Writers, engineers, and even researchers got pulled into the idea. The story of a long-lost invention being reborn was too good to ignore. Weeks of research built a narrative, but it was based on an assumption. Because when Ventum and Surishan were asked about Darwin, they were confused. They'd never seen the drawing. The connection was just a coincidence. But coincidences, when repeated, look a lot like truth. Especially when the designs do share functional ideas, like omnidirectional airflow and enclosed rotors. It wasn't plagiarism. It wasn't a revival. It was parallel thinking. Two engineers, two centuries apart, facing the same challenge in different worlds. Failure, fraud, and fresh starts. Shrouded turbines have a checkered past. In the 1920s, Dew Oliver promised huge gains with a ducted design. It flopped. He went to prison for fraud. Then came Shearwind's Invalox. Another shrouded turbine, another set of promises. It collapsed under scrutiny, eventually going bankrupt in 2017. Ventum's VX-75 is stepping into that history, but cautiously. It doesn't claim to replace wind farms. It focuses on rooftops, where large turbines can't go. Its compact shape, silent operation, and stationary frame make it ideal for tight spaces. What makes it different isn't just design, it's intent. Instead of pitching revolution, it offers a practical step. It's quieter, simpler, and manufactured with lessons learned from past failures. It's not a miracle machine, but it might finally be a viable doubt 
that doesn't fall into the same traps as its predecessors. The wind is there. The question is whether this turbine is finally built to catch it and keep going. What the future holds. Ventum isn't stopping with one model. The VX300, a larger version, is already in development for industrial buildings and warehouses. Same concept, bigger scale. But what about homes? Not quite. The VX175 isn't made for single-family rooftops. It's aimed at shared buildings, apartments, offices, and commercial spaces. Places where wind flows fast, but options are limited. And what about performance? Ventum's estimates are promising, but peer-reviewed data haven't landed yet. That's not uncommon for new entries. Still, healthy skepticism is warranted until real-world results are public. In 2020, Iranian researchers found shrouded turbines outperformed standard ones in low wind areas, cutting costs, boosting output. It's not hype. It's matching the right tech to the right job. VX175 isn't trying to outdo giant turbines. It's trying to put small ones where they've never been useful before. It may not be for everyone, but it could be for cities, and that alone could change a lot. This story began with confusion, a mix-up between two turbines, two timelines, and two very different kinds of invention. But maybe that's what makes it so compelling. It reminds us that technology isn't just about machines, it's about people. Ideas resurface, designs evolve, mistakes lead to discovery. The VX-185 isn't a Darwin invention, it's something new, but it carries a strangely poetic link to the past not through inspiration, but coincidence. So, do diffuser augmented turbines like this one have a place in the future of energy? Or are we chasing wind again? Leave your thoughts in the comments. I'll see you in the next one.